From Hollywood, the Raleigh Cigarette Program, starring Red Skelton, with Ozzie Nelson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, and Wonderful Smith. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when we stress the superiority of Raleigh cigarettes, we don't resort to flowery phrases or extravagant claims. We don't have to. The proof of Raleigh's excellence is something you can see for yourself. Compare the open ends of a pack of Raleigh's with any other brand, any other. You'll see at a glance that the tobacco in Raleigh cigarettes is unmistakably more golden in color. Now, it's an indisputable trade fact among experts that the golden tobaccos are choicer, more expensive, more sought after by professional tobacco buyers. And no less than 31 of these superb tobaccos, each contributing its own distinctive touch of seasoning, go into the exclusive Raleigh blend. That accounts for Raleigh's unrivaled richness, matchless taste and flavor. Raleigh cigarettes give you valuable coupons, too. Redeemable for over 70 luxury premiums, including United States defense stamps. Your own eyes and good taste will prove to you that it pays in many ways to get the pack with a coupon on the back. Raleigh Cigarettes. playing Anything Goes. And now we bring you Metro Golden Mayer's newest young comedian, the star of our show, who in the New York World Telegram poll has been selected as the outstanding new star of 1941, Red Skelton. Thank you very much and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hiya, Truman. Hello, Red. Say, Red, I heard that you had a date with a girl last night. Yeah, huh? That's right. What'd you do? Nothing. We didn't have any money, so we just sat around and watched her nose twitch. <laughs> uh, Red, I'll bet you were too tired to go anywhere. That's huh? right, Brad. You know, I've been too tired to do anything lately. Oh, have you? Yeah. I think I'll run out about the same time as my insurance policy. <laughs> <laughs> Say, have you tried to get a life insurance policy lately? Yeah. What happened? No soap? No life. <laughs> Red, did you have the insurance doctor examine you? Yeah, and boy, he really examined me, too. He tapped me all over with a little hammer. Oh, that bother you? No, little men with hammers have been tapping me ever since New Year's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> then the doctor made me take off the, the, my shirt, and I showed him my ribs. <laughs> oh, did you show him your ribs? Not only, I, not only did I show him, but I played a tune for him. <laughs> well, Red, what kind of insurance did you get? Well, I got an annuity. I get $50 a month. As long as I'm alive. I was alive once. <laughs> are you sure, Ozzy? <laughs> Say, by the way, are you with a good insurance company? No, my insurance company's terrible. Terrible? Why? Every time they see me, they try to pay off. <laughs> Hello, Harriet. I was just telling everybody that I've been trying to get an insurance policy. Well, insurance is a very good idea. Yeah. Do you know how many people were killed last year in bathtubs alone? Well, how else are you going to take a bath? <laughs> I stepped on a piece of soap once. <laughs> He's a windy old bird, ain't he? <laughs> you did, Ozzy? What happened? You see my forehead? No. Well, once you could. <laughs> Say, tell me something, Red. What does this doctor look like? Did you ever see a totem pole? Yes. He's the third head down. <laughs> what else did the doctor say? Well, he said I had a fallen stomach, but I didn't believe him until I tripped over it going out the door. <laughs> then he got sore because I wouldn't pay his fee. Well, how much does he charge? One million dollars. <laughs> One million dollars? Yeah. Well, does anyone ever pay that? No, he just likes to see their hats fall off when he tells them. <laughs> Well, listen, Red, why all this sudden interest in life insurance? You're young and healthy. 
You got a girl or something? Yeah, I got a girl. She's beautiful, too, boy. She's covered with tattooings. She is? Well, uh... You know, that is, we like to think it's tattooing. <laughs> I suppose you kiss your girl goodnight every night. This is the Take It or Leave It Lay program. <laughs> I said, I suppose you kiss your girl goodnight every night. No, I never kiss her. Why not? Well, she's got rubber lips, and I don't want to wear them out. (laughs) Poor girl, poor girl. She had everything to live for in this world. But she fell one night in summer For a checkered vested drummer Such is life, poor girl Poor girl, poor girl Dreamed of diamonds and a bracelet set in pearls But the solitaire he bought her Sells at Macy's for a quarter Such is life, poor girl Petals fall and roses die And dreams must say goodbye Poor girl, poor girl She was dreaming of a prince or duke or earl Instead of gowns with fancy stitching She wears aprons in the kitchen Oh, the poor, poor girl And here's Harriet with the same story But a different twist Poor girl, poor girl She had everything to live for in this world Though her suitor was a broker She preferred a suit and cloak Or oh, the poor, poor girl Poor girl, poor girl Had the diamonds and the coats of mink and squirrel But a ring that cost a quarter Meant more than the gems he bought her Oh, the poor, poor girl Petals fade and roses die And dreams must say goodbye Poor girl, poor girl Learn the meaning of the real things in this world Instead of Paris gowns she's itching For an apron in the kitchen Oh, the poor, poor girl That was Harriet Hilliard and the Florentine kid, Ozzie Nelson, <laughs> singing Poor Girl, and very lovely, too. Say, Harriet, do you love animals? I said, do you love animals? Well, what do you want me to do, kiss you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just have a little puppy dog, and I thought maybe you'd like him. Oh, well, I've got three now. What would oh. I do with him? Well, I guess there would be a lot of trouble. Say, what do you say, though? Tonight, let's show the things that people go through for their pets. First, we have Clem, the fellow from the country. Here I am on my way to milk my pet cow. Rose O'Day, Rose O'Day. She's my Fomarusi, Fomarusi, Bellarola, Boom, W. Whatever that means. And if it's what I think it means, hot diggity. Well, here's the barn. I'll just open the door and go in. Oh, darn that door. I'm going to put it on hinges someday. <laughs> well, hello, cow. It's time to milk, and I'm just the jerk that can do it, too. <laughs> Get ready, old cow. Hey, <laughs> careful there with that tail flapping me in the face. Suppose I did that to you. Would you be surprised? <laughs> Come to think of it, so would I. <laughs> Well, Dee, What you doing, Clam? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Ah, oh, you're milking your cow, ain't you? Well, I ain't giving her a Simonized job. 
say, Daisy June, I got a surprise for you. Look, I got a haircut. Well, looky there. Your head don't come to no point after all. <laughs> Up for? Well, I got my cow entered in the competition at the county fair today. And I'll bet she wins a blue ribbon, too. Oh, I, I almost forgot. Here, Clem, I thought you might be hungry, so I brought you some rock candy. Oh, rock candy, thanks. <laughs> oh, well, that tooth didn't match the others anyway. <laughs> Next time, put a little more candy in and less rock, will you? <laughs> Out of the fair. Okay. Listen, and I want you to promise that you won't flirt with no girls. Oh, well, I ain't gonna look at no more girls, cause every time I do, smoke comes out of my ears. <laughs> Don't worry, you're my Valentine. I won't flirt. I'd face death for you. You'd face death for me? You. Yeah. Well, then why did you run away from that rattlesnake yesterday? He wasn't dead, was he? <laughs> to the fair. We better get your cow into the truck. Yeah, we better. <laughs> you need any help, Daisy June? <laughs> yeah, I must be getting old. I can't lift her no more. <laughs> Here, I- I'll hold this carrot in the truck. Nice cow. Jump into the truck. <laughs> No, no, not you, Clem. Well, that's the cow. We just look alike, so. Come on, I'll get the motor started. Well, the motor started, Clem. Okay, now I'll run out and put it under the hood. <laughs> Ain't it a nice day for truck driving? Lots of people we can crowd off of the road. Clam, yeah. there's a train. How about that? <laughs> well, don't worry about it now. Wait till we get to the crossing. <laughs> Why, you don't think I'd drive reckless with this valuable cow in my truck, do you? Ah, uh, hmm. valuable cow. That cow's so old, she wouldn't make a good hamburger. Oh, don't you say that. <laughs> Tim, there's a train, I tell you. Now watch out. Well, why? We got as much right to drive on these tracks as they have. Watch out, Tim. We're going to hit that train. Then we have a lady and her little boy. Like all kids, he's an animal lover, and as the scene opens, we find him and his mother riding in a taxi cab on their way to the bus station. So, Harriet, you be my mother, and I'll be the mean old kid. Gee, Mommy, I like why now tighty tie. That's good, Junior. Dee dee dee, it's nice and go up and swingy. I would jump up and down on it. Now, Junior, don't jump up and down. You're right over the wheel. I had over the wheel? That's all right. I would just jump up and down once. Here I go, Mary. <laughs> I can stand up the rest of the way, Mary. <laughs> Hey, where are we going in that taxi car, Mommy? To the bus station. We're going to visit Grandma. Oh, yeah? And listen, Junior, I want you to be a good boy. You know, Grandma doesn't like little boys. I know, but she sure acts silly when she gets around a big one, don't she, Mommy? <laughs> Junior, how come you're so smart? Well, ever since you cut off me long curls, me widow chum have been telling me things. <laughs> Stop to quit. We are at the bus station. Pardon me, Miss Carry Bag. Hey, you let go of me here. That's me. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, pardon okay. me, Miss Carry a Bag. No, never mind. I'll carry it. It isn't heavy. It will be, because I'm going to straddle it and ride it bareback. 
<laughs> you know, I've lost better things than him in a crap game. Yeah. Where do you think I got him? <laughs> now, Mommy, you stop there and uh, you said the stork brung me to you. I didn't say he brung you, I said he flung you at me. <laughs> Oh, looky, Mommy. A little kitty cat. Look what I got, Mommy. A kitty cat. Oh, say, say, say. Wait a minute, son. That tail ain't no handle. No, but it will do. <laughs> hey, Mommy, can I have... Now, mm-hmm. what do you want a cat for? We've already got a nice, vicious dog picked out for you. Yeah. <laughs> now, you let me have him or I would tell. You'll tell what? I would tell everybody that you retread tires with a waffle iron. <laughs> Now, I want that cat. Oh, no, now, wait a minute. You don't want to take my cat Jake away, do you? Yes, I do. <laughs> we got a lot of mice at our home. Oh, Junior, we don't have a single mouse in the place. You did it. They're all married and got large families. <laughs> Junior, don't be so silly. Mice don't get married. Maybe not, but I know a couple that are going steady. <laughs> Junior, now you sit here, and I'll go buy the ticket. Okay. And don't run out on the tracks and wreck a bus. Now, what did you say that for? I was going to surprise you. Now, that's enough of that, Junior. You just sit here. And okay. remember, no panhandling while I'm gone. Okay. okay. Well, here I is, all alone. Look at this well-dressed man. I will go up to him. Hey, Mister. Yes, what is it, Sonny? Could you spare sixty-five dollars for a cup of coffee? <laughs> sixty-five dollars for a cup of coffee? Why? I like sugar in mine. <laughs> Say, little boy, have your parents ever thought of bundling you to Britain? I could answer that, but it would only lead to bloodshed. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mister. If I've said anything to offend you, go jump in the lake. Look, there's that little pussy cat again. I wonder if I could ride on his back like a horse. He looks strong. <laughs> He's nice and fat. <laughs> if I do, I did a whipping. <laughs> I do it. <laughs> I will get on that pussy cat's back and play like a racehorse. Mm, they're off. <laughs> Playing mm. racehorse with that cat? Yeah, but I ain't going to do that again, boy. <laughs> boy, I never do that again. I know what they mean at Santa Anita now when they say somebody has been scratched.
Say, Red, yes. how would you like to be in the advertising business? Advertising? With all those pretty girls? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> now, Red, there's more to advertising than pictures of pretty girls. Oh, yeah? Take Raleigh cigarette advertising. Millions of people do take Raleigh advertising and profit from it. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the magnificent premiums you get with Raleigh cigarette coupons are actually a form of Raleigh cigarette advertising. These luxury items are bought and paid for out of our profits, just as any other form of advertising. Yes, we spend our advertising money with you because we believe it's a sound way of making and keeping friends. And moreover, the silverware, electric clocks, bridge tables, or any of the 70 other magnificent premiums you get with Raleigh coupons stand as dramatic, tangible proof that Raleigh's do give you more for your money. First of all, a finer cigarette, made with the choicer, more expensive gold and tobaccos, the very finest that modern equipment and scientific manufacture can produce. And secondly, you get a plus value in the form of useful luxury premiums that pleasantly remind you over and over again that it pays in many ways to smoke Raleigh's. The pack with the coupon on the back. Raleigh Cigarettes. Uh, to get back now to people and their pets, let's go out west to a ranch and peep in on a man who loves chickens, especially fried chicken. And somebody else's chicken is at that. Um, did I and his wife have just retired for the night, but he left the chicken coop door open. Did I? Did I? Wake up. <laughs> Wake up, Dead Eye. I heard something. Wake up. There's somebody in the backyard. It's probably a peeping Tom. Well, so what? I was a peeping Tom once. <laughs> yeah, what happened? I peeked when I should have tommed. <laughs> Say, Dead Eye, you ain't scared, are you? Well, are you? Take your head out from under the covers and answer me. <laughs> All right, I'm up, I'm up. Gosh, it's dark in here. Well, light the light before you bump into something. Now, don't tell me what to do. I know what I'm doing. What are you doing? I'm breaking my leg. <laughs> Gosh, I'm pretty sleepy. This daylight savings, you know. Yeah, I'll just look out the window. <laughs> I guess I'm sleepier than I thought. Well, here's my trusty shotgun. Wonder what happened to the watchdog. There he is in the corner, asleep. Yeah, I'd wake him up, but he's not too friendly toward me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Wish that big old dog liked me more. Well, why don't you throw him a bone? Hmm? I said, why don't you throw the dog a bone? Now, don't look at my head when you say that. <laughs> Come on, boy, bring me the bone. <laughs> Come on now, bring the bone to me. No, no, bring the bone to me, not me to the bone. <laughs> well, well, just sneak out the back door and see what's going on in that hen house. Now be careful, and be sure to watch out for that clothesline I got strung up. What makes you think I'd run into a clothesline? <laughs> well, I guess I'd better get down from here. <laughs> Somebody will mistake me for a pair of drawers. <laughs> There's the uh, chicken coop and the door's open. Who's in there? Who's in that chicken coop? Nobody, just us roosters. <laughs> it's the first time I ever heard a rooster with a Dixie accent. Now you come out of there with your hands up. What, and drop all these chickens? <laughs> so it's you, huh? What's your name? Oh, everybody just calls me Cottonhead. They do? What for? I don't know. Maybe it's because I got a cotton head. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't disturb my hens. It's almost time for them to start laying their eggs. It is? Sure. When the alarm goes off, they start off right down the line. There they go. <laughs> That's Frigacy. She has a little iron in her blood. <laughs> I 
I've seen you around here before, boy. Where do you work? At the laundry. Yeah, how are things at the laundry? Dirty. <laughs> you know, I used to work down at the laundry. What did you do? I was the head stiff in the starch department. <laughs> uh, where do you live? Oh, I sort of reclines around here on the next ranch. Uh, so you're stealing my chickens, huh? Oh, no, sir. Go away from me, chicken. Stop following me under my coat. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Now, what are you doing in that chicken coop if you ain't stealing? You is the most suspicious man. Come on, boy. You're going with me down the sheriff's office. Oh, mister, please don't turn me in. Think of my wife and eight little children. You got eight children? No, sir, but she has. <laughs> you see, I moved there after the improvements was already in. <laughs> You look like a sporting man. Why don't you give me a chance? Let's roll some African golf, double to nothing. Oh, uh, yeah? You got dice there, huh? <clears throat> well, I don't know much about these gambling games, but, uh, okay. <clears throat> well, that's it. Now, will you please move off of my property? <laughs> Cousin Nelson and the orchestra have just played one of George Gershwin's great hits, Strike Up the Band. But there is another great hit which we would like to tell you about. Pipe smokers. From the first puff to the very last, Sir Walter Raleigh is richer, more flavor-packed. That's because Sir Walter Raleigh is made from selected burleys, carefully cured and aged, and blended into a masterful mixture that's richer, smoother. And Sir Walter Raleigh's particular crimp cut assures cool, biteless smoking. It has an extra pleasing, fragrant aroma, too. Yes, gentlemen, start smoking Sir Walter Raleigh, and you'll finish each pipeful with the proof that it's the quality pipe tobacco of America. Tonight, try Sir Walter Raleigh. Red Skelton with Oz and Elson and his orchestra, Harriet Hilliard, Wonderful Smith, and yours truly, Truman Bradley. We'll all be back at the same time next Tuesday. Until then... This is Red Skelton saying goodbye now. Thanks for listening. Red Skelton is heard on this program through the courtesy of the Metro-Golden-Mayer Studio. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.